prayerful and true response of grandparents or parents is to say, look, I know they're not on the track now, but they will come back to what they had before. But we're faced with another challenge just now. You can't come back to something that you have never been to before. Yes. Think about that. Wow. So, um, and we can think that they have been somewhere, but maybe they haven't. Have they encountered Christ in a personal way, through pondering, through reflection, through personal interaction um, in their early years so that they can come back to that place? Sometimes children have mm, had the, ex the good experience of being in a good place where the things are presented to them. But the question is, when that was being presented to them, were they personally engaged with it or not? Hello and welcome to another Perusia podcast. I'm Shabo Reish, your host, and very honored to have in the studio the founder of The Salt Approach. Her name is Anne-Marie Irwin, and she joins me live in the studio now. Hello, Anne-Marie, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thanks. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, thanks for coming in. It's, it was a great setup. We've got quite a lot of props here today. It's quite yes. <laughs> different to the norm, but normally we might have a few books to, to talk about. But yeah. today we're going to look at something very different. And uh, we've known each other over the years. Um, Many uh, years. You, you've been in, you've spent, you've had a long career in education. Mm -hmm. um, also a bit in the media as well, uh, mm -hmm. with uh, uh, Telepatch, I remember, and, yes. and, our, and our work uh, doing Catholic media and things like that. But now this is your uh, latest, uh, I guess, focus, the SALT approach, mm -hmm. which you founded. How long has it been uh, right. now, the SALT approach? Well, I actually focused on in a PhD that I did and completed okay. in 2018. And really it's from when I graduated with that PhD then and since then. Um, by the time I got to the end of the PhD, I thought I have to give a name to this particular project. So that's how the word SALT came about. Okay. Well, does it stand Script, for something? Yes, it yeah. does. It's, um, it's an acronym. So it's Scripture and Liturgy Teaching Approach. Okay, very so, good. So I was working on my own really for the first couple of years, uh, already putting out, um, uh, making connections with some schools that were taking it on. and. And, um, and, then in, and then just now, uh, in January this year, it's become a company. Okay, so, okay. So um, now 2023. Yeah. So it's been about five years. Five years now. Mm. So you have an actual uh, physical premises, which I got to come out and see. Yes. Um, and it, I was just uh, blown away to see all the different props out there. Yeah. We were... and, and it's a real serious operation because yeah. you're now getting into schools. Um, yes. And, and I'd love to help people unpack what is the SALT approach? What is this? What are we talking about? And then we'll, we'll, we'll dive into maybe what got, gave you the idea of it? Yes. Why, why did you go into this type of, this type of education? Right. Okay. So um, what I was wanting to do was to, to find a way that we can reach the children today mm. and, um, and reach their hearts and their minds. Uh, I was very influenced by Jared O'Shea. I I've been oh, yeah, working at Notre friend. Dame. Yes, uh, you know him well yes. too. Um, we were working together at Notre Dame for a good number of years. And then when he left actually to work in Wilcannia, Forbes, I, was, I took his, um, his lectures and, and this kind of thing. So, and I still do. I'm involved with Notre Dame today. Okay, oh, very So good. Um, I was actually, uh, initially I was working as a, as a tutor. Um, a sessional tutor and then um, I went forward to take a master's but before I finished one year of the master's it became a PhD um, <laughs> so, and I'm very much a hands-on person I like to see things happening and, and I want I wanted the research to be very practical yes and um, to to actually uh, open the pathway to making a, a, a new approach that could uh, uh, my first focus was on schools Yes. Since then, it's grown to embrace other areas, which we can talk about. But um, I, it was a practical research. So I was actually teaching religious education in a, a, Sydney, a Parramatta diocesan school. Okay. And um, it was with the idea of not changing its curriculum, but actually uh, 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 using a pedagogical approach, which is based in Jared O'Shea's 
um, work. Yes. Um, and but before him, of course, we're all on the shoulders of other people. So Maria Montessori, of course, of course, yes. and then Sofia Cavalletti. What was she uh, known for? I she's think. known for what she eventually called the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd. Okay. Yes. Yes. And um, and so um, and then Gerard O'Shea um, has worked with the similar ideas, and so my uh, my focus was I want to see how this could work in schools. Yes. Working with the curriculum that school has to offer, and that needs to be accommodated, and how and what what how could it go forward despite the challenges yes. of a twenty first century contemporary classrooms mm, so mm. filled with all the challenges that range from um, fractured families yes. uh, children who are not really engaged with the faith um, teachers that have got varying degrees of understanding themselves sometimes yes, yes. Um, the need to um, have a reporting system and how this could work and and uh, meet reach the needs of, of, a, of a reporting system accountability issues so all of these things, I wanted to see how it could successfully work in a mainstream Catholic school yeah. um, and, and offer an entire program. Fantastic. No, I am familiar. Mm. I'll, I'll touch on, I remember doing an intensive with Gerard Ache, um, who's been a great supporter of Perusia, and he's the author of Educating in Christ. A little shout out for that book. It's a great book. Mm, People want is. to get that mm. um, available at our website, Educating in Christ. Um, but he talked about when he was a principal at a school and mm. how he did incorporate the Catechism of the Good Shepherd, mm. and then that, that gave me an idea, oh, what is this, and investigating, and, and my children did do it when they were little, the Catechism of the Good Shepherd, which is great, they get involved, and mm. things are done in a miniature scale. Mm. What I like about what you've done here is, you've sort of taken it to another level where it, it, the Catechism of the Good Shepherd is, is brilliant for, for yes. those who are spending time, uh, that the child is learning, mm. it, it, it right there and then. Mm. In a school setting, when you have to You've got the limited time of mm. the period, uh, the class uh, teachers coming and going, they've, they've got to make sure, mm. you know, it, it, it could be very uh, disruptive schools and things like that. Mm. You want to make something out of the box ready to yeah, go. So absolutely. that there was a need, and I think you're filling in a need that's yes, making it practical that's, that, for schools. That's right. So, I mean, an important aspect is, well, some of the things that came out of the study and which I, um, after I finished that, I thought, okay, I'm going to make this a possibility for mm. teachers. Wow. Um, it, and what were some of the problems? They need to have materials ready to go. Yeah. They need to be durable. They need to be long, um, long lasting. They need to be very attractive. And very few times will teachers have the chance in a, a mainstream Catholic school to create the materials for themselves. Yes. Um, and, and so I thought, okay, mm, the, the models that I kind of created at the beginning became the prototypes for the models you can see around okay. here now. Okay. Um, so that and they're boxed in in boxes that you might you'll see some of the pictures here that they're interested in themselves because they are a conversation piece the in, yeah. the image on the front is a conversation piece in itself uh, they're durable they can be easily stored in a classroom so they don't take up a great deal of space they don't have to be out all the time um, but the children can access them all the time so Fantastic. When it comes to the religious education moment, the children, after um, going through the process of being introduced to the materials um, with a presentation, then they can pick the materials that they want to work with. Hopefully, especially too, in the first place, they do need to work with, hopefully, with the things that you have introduced in that very session or that okay. period of time over those weeks. But anyway, that they are free to choose. Um, what they would like to work with and there is time for them to ponder. I identified that the three important elements. One is that there has to be a tremendous respect that is mutual. Uh, mutual. Yes. A, a respect that goes both ways between the teachers and the students, the adults and the children and, and the other way around and the children with each other. There has to be a true freedom, as Montessori would say, one of the things mm -hmm. I never forget about her, one of the things she said is that what she had brought to the world is not going to be realized until the 21st century. Wow. And we're right here now. Ahead of a time. Right. Yes. So, um, and allowing children to have choices and giving them plenty of time to ponder through the wonder questions, which are, yes. have to be really well crafted. Many times people don't 
fully grasp what an I wonder question, an effective I wonder question is. And it can be very easy to go to the very easiest of questions, which really have children have very little to say about, you know. So yes. I wonder how so-and-so felt when they okay. saw this. Or okay. I wonder how, instead of going deeper into a, a question with a question which has not got a yes or no answer, that it's not a comprehension question as such, which can just be found in the script, although that has a place. Yes. Because it's important to know that you're engaging the children. But, um, but that allows them to ponder over time and that will lead them to an understanding. That's one aspect. Another aspect that was needed for teachers was a, a kind of um, a guideline. And, and from that um, came the booklets, okay, which yeah. Gerard O'Shea also has booklets, but, um, and, and I have developed my own addressing every aspect of the curriculum. So there, there are lots of figurines, uh, etc., cetera, that, um, that address all the aspects that could come up in the religious education curriculum. So the, the presentation guides gu uh, guide the teachers because at the very mm, beginning, there's a, a, a kind of a core concept or a doctrinal point, which mm. I've put in brackets there <laughs> for teacher reference only, because okay. one can tend to kind of follow and actually read all the words and it's not intended. The, the core concept or the, the doctrinal point that is, I, is, um, is listed at the very beginning of the, or described at the very beginning of the presentation booklet, is kind of showing you where the eye wanderings have to go, where the pondering okay. has to go. So it's a reminder for the teachers that um, uh, that, that is the core part of the session, so yes. that they're not lost, that they know how to uh, introduce the scripture in an engaging way using as much as possible hands-on material. So it's with, yes. with the figurines such as those yeah, ones over there. Fantastic. Um, there's, there's some up there on the shelf which they are called gospel characters. So it's kind of a, like a, a box where it's got a leper, a blind man, <laughs> um, a, a, a person who's handicapped, mother, women and children, mothers and children. Yes. Zacchaeus is there on the tree. Um, the f loaves and the fishes are there so that um, they can wow. facilitate lots of different parables or events um, using that particular additional box of, of So most of, of these gospel um, characters. about the, uh, the scriptures. So That's uh, right. Well, um, the, yes, um, it is about scriptures, but it's also about liturgy. Okay. okay. So, um, and then also here, for example, the example we have of the mass kit, it's quite small. Okay. It fits neatly into a box and it can come out and, and be assembled quite quite well okay. by the children themselves. And they love, love working that. with that. So they love to be able to um, know that they know the names of all those things. They can do little matching activities, etc. They, they It's got, got the all mini, the vestments. The mini chalice, the mini, the mini chalice. Mini yeah, the mini, <laughs> yes, that's right. And, and, um, and all the vestments, the four colours and the, also all the, the linens in miniature. Etc. Oh, so, um, if I can go back to that point that um, you brought up, you know, why do this? Yes. One of the things that has really struck struck me uh, is that many times, looking at our children, looking at children and grandchildren, one can see them perhaps going on a different track to the track one wanted mm. for them, mm. and and often. The, res the response, the prayerful and true response of grandparents or parents is to say, look, I know they're not on the track now, but they will come back to what they had before. Yes. But we're faced with another challenge just now. You can't come back to something that you have never been to before. Yes. Think about that. Wow. So, um, and we can think that they have been somewhere, but maybe they haven't. Have they encountered Christ? in a personal way, through pondering, through reflection, through personal interaction um, in their early years so that they can come back to that place. Sometimes children have mm, had the, ex the good experience of being in a good place where the things are presented to them. Yes. But the question is, when that was being presented to them, were they personally engaged with it or not? Mm? Sometimes a, a teacher can think that children are taking in everything. You let them speak for a little while and you realize they, they haven't taken yeah, certain things on point. board. Right? Another thing, many times, for example, grandparents will be in a situation of seeing 
that their children have chosen other paths and their children have not been experiencing something that is going to really bring them into an encounter with Christ. And the grandparents want to be able to do something about that. Yes. But they feel a bit handicapped, like, where do you start? What do you say? What do you use? And so from the, the first um, focus of focusing on schools, has also now um, developed so that it's become something that grandparents themselves, we've got something called the grandparents kit or the oh, grands wow. <laughs> grandparents can, could buy certain things um, or use certain things that we're ready to, that they're ready made and ready to go with booklets, etc. So that the grandparents are, uh, or parents or relatives or, or whoever have got something to show and do with the children. Yes. The children can actually put their hands on this and they can, experience it for themselves as they're telling themselves sharing the story as they're manipulating these materials you know. well, that's another and, uh, element of the in, of um interaction here because yes. just hearing hearing the stories or or, or, mm. or being at mass or yes that, that's one aspect but to be able to mm. really get your hands uh, ta something tangible tactile yeah, tangible what so does the that idea do is for the child is absolutely it? it's got to be it's a multi-sensory approach okay. so all the time you're thinking uh, 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 we, we are thinking in the salt approach how can we make this tangible in as mm. and, as, and sensory as possible okay. so it is so um, so that the children move from seeing something and 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 really recognizing it yes. right you can you can look at something but you're not really watching it you know or you can yeah hear something but you're not really listening to it so yes. you've got to kind of use all the senses so that can be with they're hearing the teacher saying the words the focus when when the teacher or the adult is presenting to the children it's not the adult themselves because if they're using the different materials the children's focus is on on the materials yes. they almost forget but they hear the voice yes. um, there are little techniques in the approach so that for example when you are reading from the scripture say passage from the scripture at that moment when you're doing the reading they're listening their focus is on on the materials there but then after you've spoken or before you move the things you yes, don't move okay. at the same time as you speak if possible that's oh, life's okay. not always perfect but you know you 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 say read a part of the scripture first and then you move the figurine okay or, you know so that and i always tell people to be very careful how you hold them you know it's not good enough to just kind of grab the bride of, oh. <laughs> of cana the wedding of cana by the head because that's very offensive to a human being yeah. so you could try and hold them further down in the body yeah, you know, so interesting. That's right. and you move them slowly and gently and um things like that uh, other ways you, you try to appeal to the to, to the to the visual so for example here this is one example let's see if it works the wedding at Cana. Oh wow, look at and this. And this is water, okay? Water goes into the into the jar. And then and then they have the experience, hopefully, that what comes oh, out comes is out red. wine. You've just turned water into wine before <laughs> yeah. our very eyes on camera. <laughs> well, Marie, how did you do that? I know yeah, Jesus that's did right. It. <laughs> it reminds me of a, one time a teacher came back to me. She'd done this in the classroom with the children, and they were absolutely amazed. And he said, well, "We know that Jesus has holy hands, and priests have holy hands too. But how did you do yeah. that?" <laughs> they know that it's actually just a little trick, you know, but it's effective. It's very yeah, effective. Wow. So you put a little bit of red that coloring, is... rich red coloring at the the inside that's just on the walls. So you can actually turn it upside down, and there's nothing in there. Yeah, but, okay. Um, and then it just says a pondering point, doesn't it? That Jesus really did do that. that well, it just comes mm, alive, doesn't it? Especially that's right. for a child. And then the other thing is, for example, so you even try to engage the, the senses. Now, perhaps this is something that's more easily done in homes and families, okay. but that they can smell the richness of the wine this is, so this is for wine, themselves. Yep. This is real yeah, wine. Real wine. So, um, real wine that is used in the Mass. And so they can smell, or, mm. or they might smell the fragrance, the very same fragrance. That um, that Jesus' feet were anointed with, you know, yes. so that they actually smell, see, touch, interact with the things. So, Powerful. and then they go away with a memory that they'll never forget. And quite often, most of the most of the presentations, they have this certain moment that's kind of a little bit of a, you know, a wow factor or, or something. Or if if they're working with the city of Jerusalem up here, for example. Yes. It's Children impressive. absolutely love that because they, they're actually able to find out where Jesus had the Last Supper, 
how, I have how far a new you appreciation had to walk. of this because I've been to the Holy Land yes. a year ago with Tim Staples and, yes. and, and we had a great group with Harvest mm. and now I can visualize mm. sort of the yes, wall. Yes, that's right. Well, often people who've been over there will say to me, oh yeah, that's right, that's in the right place. Or I actually thought, I think maybe such and such. There's a bit of a debate about one or two <laughs> oh, of these spots, you know. And so I, I've got the Herodian Palace as well as Herod's oh, yes. other palace. So yes. I, I often tell the children, I, well, as far as I can find out, we don't quite know which of the two palaces that uh, Herod was actually in when Pilate sent Jesus oh, yes. to Herod, you know, but they get to see the, the actual trek of where, where Jesus went on that day and then many other events um, very clever. Of, that, that relate to the miracles. Did, so does this, this is all December, so this is a big setup, is this in, this is a, uh, these are all piece block by block? That's right, so, so you it are, all fits into a um, box a, a box, okay. a fairly small box, and then the background is just flat. It's a vinyl fl uh, okay. that I actually painted that one myself. <laughs> oh wow! Um, but uh, then, so they can take it out. It can be out on certain days or over a few days. Or other times, it's there available for the children. Would you put the figurines in there? Is you that can do that as well. And now, well, that's a very interesting question because. I um, hadn't intended for that. When, when children are in a classroom and using the things, or, or children in a home, they will do all kinds of things mm, like that. Okay. So they, they, you find the figurines in there. Mm. Right. Um, what I do have are the, the uh, you know, classical paintings and images. That This is uh, the Kiss of Judas, for example. Oh, yes. So that they can actually place those where they happen. Where happened. Okay. Mm, that's right. And there are little labels as well that identify the, the, the different parts wow. of the city. Um, so and even in there, I've them. actually, without putting it in, making them in wood, I've actually got a couple of things there that are Roman, uh, Roman buildings, their the, the, the particular um, theatre, the Roman theatre, oh, yes. the forum. They're just on the map as well so that they can, children can even begin to realise these are the kind of buildings that Jesus saw when he walked wow. through the city. Mm. So the That's whole fantastic. thing is about... Um, being able to see, to touch, to visit, to be in those places, and then have, have time to ponder that um, in their own time. Yes. And, and for teachers in schools, that's a little bit of a challenge to actually let go, to limit one's own talking and yes. speaking. Wow. Uh, because we can talk at children or be very carried away because we know some of the answers, but we've actually got to wander alongside with the children as well. I love this and, idea of wonder. Uh, yes. so can you just give an example of what would be a, a, a good, deep wonder question? Yes, you okay, know, right. Would, and, and could we sort of see this in practice? So a, a good I wonder question will, will not have yes or no as an answer. Okay. It is generally does not ask for an answer that just can be found in the script, but it will answer a why or, a, or what could have or how would, you know, have. Okay. So... Uh, one of the questions that stands out, one, there are many questions, but a couple of good examples that can last for a long time and the children will wander and wander, you know. And we can presume they'll know these kinds of things, but a good question around Christmas time is, I wonder why God chose Jesus to be born, God the Son to be born, in such a simple, humble, poor place if he was really... Yes. The master of the universe, or whatever words you want to use. And one can think that children would come to this understanding quickly, but it's not so easy. It, it takes a lot of thinking for them, and they will be coming up with, with different angles and answers, and, and sometimes they, they come up with an answer that even I have not thought of. Yeah. You know, it's just amazing <laughs> how deep children can be. Another very good question is, um, say... Uh, I wonder why uh, John the Baptist, when he saw Jesus coming to be baptized or in his passing in front of him, pointed to him and said, there is the Lamb of God. I love that scene, yes. Yeah. There is the Lamb of, behold the Lamb of God. Um, so why did John say that? Mm. What did he mean by that? That's a very deep question because it goes back to typologies and yes. the Old Testament, the New Testament etc. But um, some other examples of, of good questions would be like, I, I wonder why the mustard seed is like the kingdom of heaven. I wonder how doubting Thomas can help me today. 
mm. if you're talking about mm. the moment, you know, with older children, the, there's that moment when um, he doubts, he doesn't believe, and Christ yes. comes to and asks him to put his hands in his, uh, his fingers in his wounds. Powerful scene. <laughs> okay, so I wonder how that can help me. So you're trying also to bring it into their own lives as well. Um, I wonder how the apostles would have reacted seeing Jesus sleeping in the boat. Now, one word that I try to avoid in general, it's not a total no-no, but is the word feel, because it's, it, it limits oh, okay. children's language. So you kind of try and word things in a way that, that goes deeper than just a response to a feeling or an yeah, emotion. Yeah, good point. Mm. Because our faith is so much more than just emotions, of Absolutely. Mm. So is the teacher asking those questions, or is, this, mm. is the teacher guiding the, the, the child, the student, Right. down these questions, or are you facilitating in a way where how do we get the children to ask these questions? Oh, very good question. So um, the, the, uh, after the presentation, so you've presented a parable, you've presented an event, a miracle, something mm, from the life of Christ, mm. or, um, or even something to do with the liturgy. But, uh, so you've presented that, and then what, what is done in, in this particular approach is then the children are gathered in, in front, a class full of children or just the grandparents with their grandchildren. And there are several I wonder questions in the booklets. Okay. The idea is not to present all of them and they're like, oh, we have to do all of these because uh, I mean, yeah. that can be a bit of a misunderstanding. There's a range there. Okay. And so you, you, you pick one or two of them and you actually, you know, encourage a bit of verbalization sometimes n nothing comes out the children don't say a great deal but the seed has been planted for them to ponder mm. that and you might say well that's <laughs> something you can think about when you're doing your mindful coloring in yes. or when you're working <laughs> with the figures that I'm, I've been using today you might be thinking about that what could be the answer to that and then many other times without asking the children will come up with their own I wonder questions yeah. And that's just pretty amazing when that happens. It gives you goosebumps because it... Or they'll come to some kind of realisation uh, relating to an I wonder question, which is something that... Uh, and I've, I've come across this. I, I can't even think of an example right now. But um, when the children come up with an answer that you have never actually personally thought, but it's perfectly possible. Yeah, isn't that you know, great when very, that happens? It's very wow. moving. So they'll often come back, for example, a good I wonder question or good thing, things that they're pondering, they'll endure. So for example, with that one of the Lamb of God, I had children coming for nearly a whole year with possible answers wow. to that. And they were in year three at the time. So th they would come up when I was leaving the school and come up to the bars at the school playground. And say, I think I've got the answer. It's in this book that I was reading, you know, or what have you. Or they'll, say, they'll come back and they'll say, you know, you know how we were talking about this the other day? Well, I was lying in bed thinking about things and I suddenly thought such and such, you know. Wow. So that's when you that's know you're great. actually reaching the children. Yes. When they they're are thinking engaged. about it beyond yes. the, the classroom. Yeah, they're thinking beyond the classroom. Absolutely. How now you've you've been doing this for a few years now? How, how has the reaction been? What's the response been mm. like? And uh, from both, uh, I guess the, the student feedback and even teachers uh, mm. feedback from teachers. Mm. Well, it, well, I'm always ready to hear the negatives, but it's yeah. usually very positive. <laughs> Fantastic. Positive in that um, uh, with teachers. There is a, a diocese within the um, New South Wales that is actually planning to implement this now in every classroom and wow, every school. So, um, and, then, and things come through, you hear things and comments from people. I mean, one teacher I remember in kindergarten saying, you know, that she has learned so much just by <laughs> teaching it. And that's <laughs> the other thing that they, that they are on a journey themselves many times. Interesting. And, and um, comments, for example, teachers who are observing from high school um, observing the, the children in year one or year two or kindergarten even, and after the session saying, goodness me, if, I, if my year sevens knew as much as that, it would be amazing, you know, that they actually, um, how much the children are taking on board. Yeah, yes. The children will ha have lots of comments. I mean, there's quite a few listed on the website actually, you know, oh, that, um, we can talk about that a bit. Yes. But, um, you know, you'll get comments like, you know, well, I could spend the whole holidays here. No? <laughs> I know, I thought it was going to, didn't think it was going to be that good, but this is fantastic. This is so much fun. I love it. Yeah, or they'll say, um, 
when we have this, uh, well, when I was doing the research, there were I had a particular room set aside for this, which was great. Um, and and one child would have said, for example, well, you know what, this room is like a room of God. <laughs> or they'll smell a candle that's been snuffed and they say, it smells holy in here yeah, or something, you know. Imagine. So anyway, but they love the fact that they can touch the things, manipulate yes. the things, and that it's multi-sensory. It, it doesn't um, also eradicate totally the idea of using some audio-visual filming, okay. for example, but they have to be tastefully chosen. Yeah. They have to appeal to a wide range of children and, and, and set-ups, mm. but they need to follow the, the line of the truth fairly well. Yes. So um, one thing I often tell people is don't start your sessions teaching with a video, right? Don't do that because it kills the imagination. If when you bring oh, it, right. bring in the video, bring it at the very end okay. as a consolidation, you know, a little clip from The Chosen, right? That beautiful yep, yep. moment when he's talking to children is a great one to use. Yes. And there are many other bits and pieces that can be used. A a, a little, little clips um, or th little consolidation clips if it's about the sacrament something that's going over something that they are exploring in a in a, a hands-on way so that you're not cutting their imagination yeah, you know, love that it, it, it's the child has to be the one thinking yes and the teacher has to the adult and the teacher have they can actually answer very direct questions from the children so there are some things that it's taken the church 2000 years to unfold <laughs> you know and those things are passed on. We can pass on things to, to the children with, with very clear answers. But other times you have to let them ponder, let them delve, let them okay. discover. I imagine it's stimulating mm. the imagination so much so that they're thinking of things they've not thought of before. And they're like, oh, mm. so what about this? And mm. what about that? And mm. how? And that's that, that's that, right. That, that. And, and that's another thing, the approach, the whole thing of freedom and respect for children, mm. uh, the respect for the child. Um, the ideal classroom in, in my mind is, is not one where in that particular kind of environment where children if they're going to say something have to have their hands up it's, okay. like, it's much more informal in a way yeah. but this approach too it's not about sitting just in a circle it's just sitting so you can see so, so, so uh, they, would they, a classroom look like um Children uh, uh, in different mm. areas of the classroom uh, well, for on the their own, right or? so for the presentation moment if it's in a classroom um there would be uh, ideally a space in the classroom where the children can gather it's okay. often available in a classroom anyway at the front at the side um, uh, close to a, a prayer table or something like this and then uh, that's where the things begin and then um, after the um, I wonder questions that follow yes. the presentation you have to draw that to a close you kind of sense when it's important to do that and it gets to the point where children can then um, I, one would say, okay, off you go to, to your choices. But they've been trained in the choices. So they know, they know how to go about making choices. Yeah, they know how to do watercolor painting with cotton buds that can be clean and easy to so throw away. So you have away. to train them? You have uh, to actually demonstrate yep. everything explicitly. Okay. So um, many times it takes a, could take several months in a classroom for that to oh, happen. Wow. So each week you're probably introducing a new little technique, whether it's making a little book, whether it's yes. um, doing mindful colouring in, or painting mm, with, um, with cotton buds, as I say, watercolours, or, um, or model, modelling with plasticine, but things have to be explained to children and demonstrated and practice. So often the first time you're, mm. you're introducing a possibility to, to them is going to be um, something that they're all going to do. Maybe they'll choose different things to do, but they're all practicing that particular skill. So then after some time, when it comes to that moment saying, OK, mm, teachers do this in different ways. But um, can you think in your mind what you want to do first? Because they can yes. move around to different things. And when they're ready, they can move off to that. Quite often they've already worked out where they want to go. And I've got some film footage of this, but when you say, okay, off you go, and then boom, up and off, quietly to different places in the room. Some go to collect something that they want to work with. Some want to work with a jigsaw puzzle. Some want to be doing journaling. Yes. Some want to be reflecting on the, the, the sayings of Jesus. You know, lots of different things can be happening at the same time. Fantastic. Mm. Well, uh, and they don't want it to end. You know, it's always yeah, it's, it's oh. a challenge to get to that last bit of audio visual because they're just <laughs> like, they're just so absorbed. So good. <laughs> but they have to learn as well that yes. they have to 
replace, put back the things they have used, that they have to live okay. order and all of that kind of thing. That's got an important. Now, now there are so many different kits. Yes. So you've got various mm. Bible stories um, mm. that are there, and and a teacher would would get a box. You'll mm -hmm. you'll have say, and if I can, if you don't mind me, I'll pick mm. up a booklet. Mm -hmm. um, the teacher would would go through the presentation guide, mm. and and then you have the props inside. So here I'm holding one here, the sower. Yes. Matthew uh, 13, 3 to 8. The teacher would, you've got here materials, so... Um, that tells the teacher what they need to have yep, present. ready to go before the class so starts. It's, yes, so it should be easy to, to handle, easy um, set up already in the classroom. Okay, so here's an so, example of so the parable the, of the saw here. That's right. I don't know if the camera is getting that, um, but you've got, uh, did you know questions? And, and so lighting a candle as well so that would mm, be mm. Um, i haven't actually got a candle here today but lighting a candle is a, a great thing to do okay. and it's commonly done with the uh, godly play i think even okay. and, and um the catechesis of the good shepherd but it reminds us of that these are words from scripture and that um and that also it's reminding us of jesus the light yes, okay. of the world okay so the words to introduce sometimes the pe the booklets have got words to introduce yes, please. so um uh so that it smooths the way for for children. So some, uh, if there's vocabulary in there in the scripture, that's going to be a bit too challenging, or they might not know about it, what that word means. You explain that briefly before okay. you get going. And then the tone of the voice is really important. You've okay. got to not just read a thing. You have to actually um, say it more than read it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's no, there's no problem with actually reading the material though, because it keeps you on the on the track. So we're going to listen to a parable that Jesus told about the seed being sown. We're going to light a candle to start with because it's going to remind us that Jesus is the light of the world and we're reading from the Bible. This is from Matthew. And he spoke to them in parables saying, A sower went out to sow. You might indicate the sower now. And as he sowed, some seed fell on the path and the birds came up and ate it. Some fell on the rocky ground where it had little soil and it sprang up at once because the soil was not deep. And when the sun rose, it was scorched and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among the thorns and the thorns grew up. That's it. And the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on the rich soil and produced fruit a hundred or a sixty or thirty fold. Now we're going to extinguish the candle. We'll just do it rather. At the end of reading the gospel, you usually, scriptures, you usually put it out. Sometimes you let it keep running because really God is present all the time. Okay. So often I've been so absorbed I forget to put <laughs> out the candle. Mm -hmm. So, and it's, if you have a living candle, it's really great. And then you can, the children can actually have a chance to use the snuffer oh, to put yes, it out. Yes, absolutely. So I don't have it with me today. So what are some of the things we can wonder about? I wonder what the seed would be. Who might the sower be? Yeah, this is interactive. Mm. What makes the soil rich? What makes a rich soil? Okay, so there's those kinds of questions. And then afterwards, the children, after there's been some conversation with the children, they can respond by using the diorama themselves, and it's all listed here, engaging in some simple craft activity that relates to that. Simple is the word. Okay. Because the activities, if they are too complex and so fascinating in themselves, then it's not going to help the children to ponder the topic they're going to get caught up with the fascination of just doing yeah. that particular craft. <laughs> it could be as simple as a jigsaw puzzle. Jigsaw puzzles are really great, and we're in the process of developing quite a Fantastic. lot of those ourselves, Excellent. the wooden ones that are not so complex that they have to concentrate on uh, matching the shapes, but more matching the picture. So it's just cut into the okay, simple yes. squares. Um, a certain number, 30 pieces, 15 pieces, depending on the age of the children, so that in putting that together, they're really reflecting on the different aspects of the, of the parable. Yeah, so those okay. kinds of activities. Um, reading the account from a Bible or from a children's Bible or a picture Bible. 
what have you. Spending some time in, in, the, in the prayer space if it's in a classroom. Okay. So another thing I often tell teachers, uh, when they're setting up a prayer space, to set up a prayer space that is not up high, which often it happens to be oh, because yes. there's a shelf there, but to set it down low. To set it down low, to have some uh, greenery, real or faux, <laughs> close by, some attractive um, image on, on the little prayer space, a crucifix, fairly simple. So that and inviting, so that the children can want to be there for a few minutes. Yes. Reading, looking at some pictures, um, just reflecting quietly, praying in a simple way. For a child, thirty seconds is a long time, and you might think <laughs> anybody's been there a little while. It doesn't matter, because that a lot can happen in just a few moments in a child's oh, wow. mm, prayer life. Mm. So prayer. So things like. Prayer, ha having access to the prayer table is something that teachers should let children do in, in that time, which is called the time for free choices. Okay. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Mm. Well, thank you. I mean, just to see that and you had everything laid out. Yes. Uh, it's a good little taste of what... It, this is one of many... Do you know, yes. Toby, roughly how many box, different box sets you've made or pre-made now? Um, <sighs> Um, okay, so would there be like fifty of these? Yes, probably. About yeah, that. wow. Yeah, I'm about just 50. around around the studio yes. here. I can see so many. Yeah. Um, just some examples, just that you can point out. Just listen for those listening. Mm. What 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 have we got here? Just if you okay, able to. Okay, so what we have here um, on the on the top shelf behind you. Yep. What we have there is the road to Emmaus. Okay. Mm, so that's a significant moment, and in the Sydney Archdiocese, that's the, the kind of core of their whole. Um, oh, approach yes, right. the, the Emmaus movement um, moment. And, uh, so then underneath that, we've got the range of characters that can be used in many different stories. The, there's the leper there and yes. the blind person, the scribes and Pharisees and women and children. Underneath that, we've got um, the tomb. Do you want to bring that one yeah, out? Yeah, there's here? an actual tomb. Yeah, there's the tomb. And um, with women, Jesus, the risen Christ, the angel, the guards that are guarding the tomb. Then over here, well, then you have the, the, the mask kit, yes. the miniature mask kit. Yeah, come, I love that. After that, we've got the, the parable of the Good Shepherd, um, okay. which can actually be used for several parables. But you've got a, a wolf as well. Um, there he is. Yep. That's right. Okay. Wolf. Then over here behind me, what have we got there? So on the top shelf, you can see behind me, on the top shelf behind me, that's the story of the forgiving For father forgiving or father. the prodigal son. Oh, yes. So you have the little pig pen and you have the um, son when he's proud before <laughs> he <laughs> leaves his father and then when he comes back, he's forlorn and sad and hungry and tired. Um, so, and his brother is there as well and uh, a servant. Underneath that, we have got the Last Supper. Yeah, wow. Got the Complete candles there, with, yes, <laughs> you, you got can, the backdrop. You, yes, and you can see Judas is on the side there as well. He's got a little money bag. Oh, yes. um, then underneath that, you've got the Good Samaritan. Yeah, thank you for that. That's a, that's a great uh, um, example of, of what you've mm. got there. There's so many mm. great figurines and stories. and. The challenge okay, is sometimes yeah. how to use this yes. material. So one of the things the website we're, we're producing okay, so now for the website, website is called thesaltapproach.org. Okay. There are, um, there's an online shop there, but also there's going to be a section which will give people a lot of examples of how to present these. So yeah. we're going to be filming uh, each presentation uh, in a short, a short presentation. So it okay. gives the teacher or the parent an idea of how to actually Excellent. Use Excellent. this material. So, so, yeah. so what about setting? Now, we have talked about schools. Mm. Are there other settings you mm. can have this that, yes. in the home? or? Any well, then uh, after the schools came the parishes. There's been okay. a growing interest in this. So I was invited to, um, uh, to, to spend a day with, with the sacramental coordinators. Yes. And we have produced uh, a, a teacher's manual, a student workbook, and um, hands-on craft activities to match the materials to teach First Holy Communion. Fantastic. So there's a whole range of materials can be used for teaching First Holy Communion. 
and um, that's just receiving its imprimatur right now, right, actually. Right. So that will come out. After that, we're going to produce, uh, we're, we're well into it, um, the, uh, the, the program for teaching reconciliation, for confirmation, wow. and also RCIA for children. So oh, really? that when wow. if parents are coming into the faith and the children are coming along as well, that the children will be able to have their own preparation using all this hands-on material. <laughs> Another thing that this um, uh, is of interest to parishes is that, uh, and a few parishes have done this, they've bought all of the materials so that they have got a setup that can serve for Sunday school, oh, which is okay, a growing yeah. thing now. I think that um, at St. Joachim's, for example, I'm actually going to be teaching there myself yeah, wow. in this Sunday school concept. Wow so that the children can, it's not taking them out of mass, it's actually after the mass or All before, right. it just depends, but um, a time of, 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 of learning about the faith uh, following the liturgical year. Very good. So um, uh, that will be another thing that's growing and, um, and is, also, is already taking off now. Wow. So for the parishes, there's that. There's the concept too, we're trying to set up um, libraries where these things can be borrowed so they can be housed in a parish and then people who are teaching, um, for example, in the public schools yes. can actually borrow the items and take them to the school. So they only have very little time there, 20 minutes perhaps, but they can do a little presentation when, when it's appropriate and um, they can borrow the materials from those libraries. That's, That's another idea. And that, and that can extend to um, homeschoolers too, that they can okay. actually access if they have um, a place where the things are kept, then uh, a large number of families can actually um, borrow those materials yes. and, and uh, it appeals to them as well. I better get them set for our families. <laughs> yeah, great. <laughs> and, then, um, and then now as well, the, the thing of um, parents having something in the home, uh, grandparents having something, it's a wonderful conversation, you know. Yes. Uh, with children, your grandchildren that you can have, and so, uh, a wonderful have a, way of passing on. A kit for them, right? A, well, there is. We, we've kit. isolated things that we feel that they would um, uh, would well be able to use. Okay. And of course, parents, and grandparents may not um, want to buy all of it, but it's all there available for yes, them. Yes. Yes. Because the important thing is availability. Because one Absolutely. can have all these wonderful ideas, but. Um, you have to be able to deliver the goods <laughs> yes. and that's been a challenge. So now we're just about to, we're, we're negotiating now mass productions oh, to be fantastic. able to serve the needs of the, of the schools that are coming on board and, and um, the parishes. It's yeah. so exciting, mm. Emery. I mean, congr it's a lot of work that's gone into this. I could see uh, everything is custom made, mm. um, purpose built and, mm. and, and you can use these you know, throughout time and, and you're going to have to mass produce these. So yes. to have them in, in different parishes, how exciting right. people's That's homes. Right. Mm. Um, wow. We, we hope at Perusia we may be able to bring um, aspects of this to, to our, our yeah. store as well. Uh, things that are more yes. uh, easily... Um, that could be packed and shipped and yeah, we'll no, definitely that's right. love to see what we could do. The sky's the limit and it can work so well with some of the materials I was seeing that you have there. Yes. The wonderful Jeff Gavin's materials, yeah, etc. The so they've got, for example, the, um, I was noticing the, um, the plays, the scripts. That's fantastic, isn't it? So this, it's a wonderful oh, opportunity right. for, yes. the, for the free choice time that they could actually dip into the script. But uh, the presentation could be much more physical, yes. like hands-on physical, um, so that um, it, you, know, you can see these materials complementing other materials that are already yeah, in existence. Absolutely. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, it makes sense, uh, especially children who are hands-on, the sensory education. Mm. I love all this. Now, if we want to know more, so they can go to your website, do you explain a bit further about this concept, the SALT yes, approach? Yes, yes. So the website at the moment is uh, www.saltapproach.org. Okay. Um, it we'll is actually a registered screen. charity now. It's a registered Excellent. charity. And, um, and there you will find the materials, you'll find the pedagogy explained and okay. unpacked. You'll find the, um, the, the research, summary of the research there. Um, responses of teachers and parents and children are there as well. And then there's going to be a growing number of these little video clips that people can subscribe to, to be able Excellent. to access, access that. Um, yeah, so it's, it's kind oh. of the full package. <laughs> Very exciting. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll pray yeah. for this and for the growth of this. May, may this sort of be rolled out far and wide across Australia mm. and beyond. And beyond, uh, yes, United that's States right. And beyond. 
Uh, We'd any love final, to get there. Mm. final thoughts here uh, today? Well, we've got you. Any <laughs> sort of closing comments? Mm. Well, um, in summary, I, I suppose you, it, the SALT approach is something that is like a show and tell approach, but mm. often the showing and the telling is almost without words because it's in the materials that the children are pondering and, and exploring. It's a kind of also another thing I like to say, which I haven't mentioned uh, up to this moment, but uh, it's almost like reverse evangelization. It's, reverse it's, evangelization. Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> the children get caught up in this approach and they pull their parents along with them. Okay. They pull their teachers along with them. The teachers are caught up by the enthusiasm of the children when they see how they respond. So it's in trying to, in, in, in trying to evangelize the children, it's actually allowing the children to evangelize the adults. <laughs> it's a reverse evangelization Very almost taking place, which is an interesting Love thing that. to think about. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for joining us today. This is very exciting. And uh, I w I'm wishing you all the very best. Um, Thank you. I love these mini, just the miniature uh, jars <laughs> and everything about it. Uh, the little tiny bird. I mean, everything is just uh, so well done. So I, I want to thank you. I want to and, and thank everyone for for watching today and listening. Um, as always, you can subscribe to the Perusia podcast. You go to the Perusia uh, podcast. All the platforms are there for free. You can subscribe as well as our YouTube channel. Please subscribe, click the bell and spread this far and wide. I think this show in particular will benefit many teachers, parents, grandparents and catechists. So um, please uh, check out the website, uh, thesaltapproach.org and uh, let's pray for this great thriving and growing ministry. I'm Shabal Reish, your host, and until next time, God bless.